Hi everyone and welcome back to our Gamepad UMG widget series. In this series we're covering how to create a menu system that will operate with a gamepad as well as a keyboard. Now previously we have got to the point of adding uh, content for each of these pages and each of these pages is going to demonstrate different ways of navigating system. So last time we looked at character and we've done a character sheet with a simple three button options here that we can click on and just simply add values to them doesn't really do much else. Obviously, you tile it into your game as you please. And we can navigate with the right bumper to the inventory uh, tab. And this is what we're working on today. So the inventory tab is going to include a grid system. So in this episode, we're going to go through how to set up a grid system, how to set a focus onto it, and how to navigate it using the gamepad. So let's get started with this. So first, I need to go into my inventory and look at what I need to do in here. So the first thing I do is just get rid of this text because we don't need that and instead we're going to use a grid panel so use a grid panel drag it into my canvas panel here i'm going to set the size and scale of this appropriately such and i can click the size of the content if i like um we'll do it after the fact actually so you can actually see what it looks like um, but i want it to be in the sort of middle of the screen so to do that i'm going to change its anchor to be the middle of the left hand side and then i'm going to change its position x and position y back to zero now its default is the top left, that is the case for all widgets. So to change its alignment, we can go change alignment over here on the details panel. So I'm going to align it in the Y halfway down. So I put in 0.5 and that will align it halfway. And then I'm just going to offset it a little bit in the X, like so. I say 130. Okay. So next is the content for this uh, grid panel. So the grid panel is going to be made up of buttons. So to save uh, dragging in loads of different copies, what we're going to do is do a separate widget, which we can then use as a uh, sub widget in this uh, field. I'm going to close that and create the new sub widget. And this is going to be called um, inventory uh, slot, grid slot, we'll call it grid slot underscore UI. And we're going to open this up. So initially, we don't want a canvas panel. And instead, we want to use a size box. Uh, we don't need a canvas panel because this is going to be a sub widget. Okay, so typically for sub widgets, you don't need a canvas panel. Typically, um, and with that size box, I'm going to change the width and height of the right over here on the right hand side to 128 each. Inside that size box, I'm going to put in a border, and inside that border, I'm going to put a button in. So we're just going to tweak the appearance of this. So first of all, I'm going to change my fill screen over here to desired. That way I get to see it in its true glory. Next, I'm going to change the border. And the border over here is going to change uh, the brush color to my dark one that I've stored from previously. OK. Then go to my button. And I'm going to change the background color to that to an alpha of 0. I'm also going to change the padding for this to be 10. You can see a little border around it there. So if you do want to add some color to it, you can do, but that's fine for me there. Um, and I think we're kind of good there. Okay. So I'm just going to change the name of my button here to slot button. And border, I'll leave it as border. We can actually do it actually slot border. And size box, I'll leave it as is because we're not going to do anything with that. So the slot border and slot button are things going to be changing throughout our code. But before we go into coding that, let's just get the appearance of our widget looking right. So this is the button done. So we can close this and go back to our inventory UI. Now we can fill this up one by one if we wished by using dragging in a user created slot and dragging it in one by one. That's long though. The quickest way of doing it is going to your graph and using the pre-construct event. The pre-construct event is what happens before any kind of gameplay happens. So for example, it allows you to build something and see it inside the edit editor. So to do this, we're going to do a for loop. And the for loops first index is going to be zero and last index is going to be 23. That's because I want three rows of eight slots. Now that zero and 23 will give me 24 
different slots. Now on the loop body, we're going to create widget. And we're going to choose that inventory button or grid slot. And on the return value here, we're going to add that to the grid. So to do that, I need to make first of all make my grid variable. So with the grid selected, I'm going to name it over here, inventory grid. And tick is variable. I can go to the graph. And you should see now variables inventory grid. I can drag that out, which is get. And now I can add that as a child. So I can add child to grid. So the return value goes into the content there. So now my uh, each slot is being added to this grid 24 times. But I need to position them. Okay, so by default, they're just going to the top left hand uh, corner, all of them. So we need to change that so that's not the case. So with the slot uh, reference here, this return value, this grid slot reference, we can set the row and also set the column. Now for row, I'm going to drag the index out from my for loop and divide it by a integer. This integer is going to be the number eight. And I'll plug that into my in row. Now dividing means that it will get you the whole number. Okay, so if we're in slot 12, 12 divided by eight will get you one. Therefore it put in row one, which is the middle row. Okay, if the number is uh, six and then this button will be uh, six divided by eight, which is zero. That will go into the first row. Okay. Now to get the column, it's very similar, but you want to do modulo. So it's just type in mod, you get the percentage sign integer, and modulo gets the remainder essentially, and that remainder then will feed into the column, and we'll type in eight in the modulo. Now with that plugged in, we can click compile and go back to the design view, and you should see all the buttons now appear in your grid. I don't like how they're all squished up, so let's spread them out apart. So with this first return value, we can drag that out and set padding. And the in padding for this, we can drag out and click make margin. And we're going to type in for each of these values 25. Compile, go back to the design view. And you see now, now more spaced apart is more accurate to what I want. And you can see we've got eight in the rows and three, and, and sorry, eight in each, uh, in each row, and there's uh, three rows in total. Okay. So that'll do for that. And if I go back to my play and go to my menu, you can see that grid is now there in all its glory. So the next trick is to make it so these buttons have a, a different state. Okay, so I'm going to my inventory grid slot UI and go to my graph. I delete all this, we don't need any of this. And we're going to change some of the appearance of this button based on whether or not it is focused on or is being hovered by the mouse. So I'm going to go to my designer view and we're going to change the slot would it be a variable. So tick is variable because we're going to be changing the color of it. And with the graph of that, we're going to right click and we're going to go get hovered. Oh, no, not get hovered, just top in hovered. No. Oh, wait, sorry. Slot button and then click on hovered. My bad. In the graph view, click on your slot button and choose the on hovered event. And from there, we can set keyboard focus to itself okay and that'll set the focus to this individual slot with it being focused we can change its appearance so if you type in the word focus and look up top you'll find the event on added to focus path we'll need that and in there we're going to drag our slot border out to get and set brush color plug that in i'm going to choose a little green color like so and I also want it for when I lose focus so right again right click type in focus go right to the top and you'll see event on removed from focus path so as soon as thing has lost its focus this will change the color back so set brush color 
and the color is going to be the one I had previously as default. Hit compile and we're done for this for now. So at the moment if I push play and go to my inventory you can see I can't focus anything really that well. You can see it kind of working but only when I click on it. Okay, So we need to change this so that is no, not the case. And you can see here's the errors. This widget does not support focus. If the user widget it should be set to is focusable to true. So we need to go into our inventory UI and on inventory grid we want to make sure that your visibility is set to self hit test invisible which it should be by default but then on the inventory grid slot we're going to change the slot button to be visible and the slot border to be self hit test invisible and that basically means that when you click on it it will ignore any clicks and transfer that click to its child which is the button when you've set it to self hit test invisible for the border you want to click on the inventory grid slot root up here and you want to turn its is focusable to be true hit compile and then test that out and you will see that if i go into my inventory now i can hover over the buttons and they will now register that they are focused okay so when i hovered it's adding it to the focus path okay but when i offer another one it's adding a new one to the focus path and removing the old one. Okay, so that's why you get that effect. So if we were to take this further and look at the control inputs, so the control input will take over but automatically for grid based on where the focus currently is. Now the focus here is on this slot here, but if I push left on the D-pad or on the stick, it'll move to the left. So with the right, up and down. If I push down and keep going down, it won't go any further, okay? But if I keep pushing up, it will escape it. Now the reason why it's escaping it is because it determines when you push up, it by default will try and go up its hierarchy. So it's actually now on where it says inventory right at the top. And I can prove that if I move to the left once and hit A, I'll go into the character slot. Back to inventory and so forth, okay? So what I'm gonna do is tell it to not focus, uh, lose focus from the grid, okay? So I don't want it to escape the grid. So if I go back to my inventory UI, and choose the grid option here scroll down to where you find navigation and you'll see up change that from escape to wrap and on down i'm also going to change that to wrap compile that close that push play and i'm now on my controller hit the menu button go to my inventory and if i have a mouse over something and now I'll move my stick you can see it just wraps around rather than goes down so the next job so on the controller, when I push start and go to inventory, hang on, let's move the mouse out of the way. Go to inventory, you'll notice that nothing's highlighted, okay? That's because I haven't told it to focus anything. Instead, it's what it's done is kept the focus up the top, okay? So what I'm gonna do is when I go onto this screen, I'm gonna change the focus down to the grid automatically. To make it so that the inventory UI automatically switches the focus over to the grid, we do something that we've done similar to the, the character event, uh, the character page, sorry, and use the event tick. And if we go to our character sheet um, in here, look at the graph, and look at the tick event, this whole top part here, you kind of want to copy this, okay? You don't want the skill strength, but you can copy this top part here. So control C, go to inventory, paste that in, Let's delete that event, and put this on the tick. Uh, we don't need a sequence because we're only doing one thing here. We delete the sequence. And on the event tick, we're going to set this keyboard focus to the inventory grid's first child. So get child at and leave that at zero and plug that in. And what that means, when I push play and go into my grid, it will set oh, without the mouse hovering over it. Let's do that again. Go to the grid, you'll see the focus is set to the top left hand one. Okay and I can now navigate with my sticks automatically. So that's where grids come in very useful. They automatically set up that navigation for you. Uh, like most panels, they have that built in. You don't have to do too much work to it. Okay, so all you wanna do, once you've done this, you can, it's up to you what you code in for inventory. So for example, if you wanted to use an item, you just make it on-clicked, do that event. Um, if you wanted to do, delete the item, 
you can make another button input for it on clicked again you check what button hit it and delete that item but that's up to you entirely on what you're trying to do with your inventory this is just to show you how to set up the screen but as you can see I'll go back to my character and into my character inventory and see what I want to do okay um, and you'll tie this in with your inventory system to build, uh, build the buttons up with content again I'll leave it up to you if you want to see an example of that being used I've got an inventory system series where I showcase that in a more um, less gamepad friendly option so you can see that going on there um, but you can see how to then how to uh, populate the buttons with uh, inventory content but anyway that's it for this episode we've covered how to do inventory screen with a grid how to use a grid with a gamepad uh, in the next episode we're going to go over the quest now the quest page is going to have two halves the first half is going to be a scrollable box with the list of quests and the right hand side is going to be another scrollable box but with the quest uh, information and the whole point of this is on gamepad the left sticks control the left hand column and the right sticks control the right hand column to scroll through that scroll box Thanks very much for watching. If you want to see that next episode right now, you can head to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey and you catch that episode plus many other episodes um, all for just $1. A big thank you to all of my supporters uh, over on the Patreon as well as my YouTube members. Big shout out and thank you to all of you for your continued support. Thank you again everyone. Don't forget to hit like, like subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.